Hello again. Okay, so I am fed and watered, as we would say in Scotland. Um, and before I start painting the piece, I just want to share something else with you. Um, I was setting up the tools there and I realised that uh, some of you might not be really aware of what, what's the best tools to use on this furniture. So I'm just going to explain a wee quick um, bit about brushes and rollers here, right? So what I've did here is I've picked three rollers and three brushes. High quality, medium quality, low quality, okay? Um, and I'm just going to explain the difference between them. So, sadly, I don't have a sleeve for my party roller at the moment. Um, I'm finding it quite difficult to source these. I need to get down to Dulux. I probably could order online, to be honest. Um, but I'm a fan of going out to paint manufacturers. I like to have a wee look about. I'm like a paint. I'll be in a sweet shop. I like to see all the new products and stuff. So, I like to go in. So, <laughs> I haven't been able to source the sleeves for these yet, okay? This is what we would call a high quality roller. Apologies, it is covered in paint at the moment. I haven't used this since I've been on site, um, I'll be honest. Um, so I've got two of these and they've just been lying in my kit. So it's covered in paint. However, I'm just going to turn that music down really quickly. I forget sometimes how, how loud it is until I'm doing these videos. So this is your high quality roller um, and on this would go, well what I would use for furniture would be a purdy duff sleeve um, which is probably, um, it gives a nice, a lovely nice smooth finish, a purdy duff so this is a high end roller cage and sleeve and um, even for this small size you're probably looking about with the, the cage and the sleeve uh, from a paint manufacturer you're probably looking about 17, 18 quid for that so that's your high end. Um, Medium. Here we've got a Hamilton um, handle. I'm fond of Hamilton handles and I'm going to show you why. They are one of the only manufacturers. Apologies again, it's fucking full of paint. Sorry, I swore. I don't know if I need to bleep that out. I'm still new to this. But anyway, the reason I like these is because you can see they've got a screw inside, right? So they can attach to a roller pole, which if you've got to get a small area that's hard to reach, this is very, very handy. Um, these will set you back about, I think now, uh, post COVID and Brexit, probably about four or five quid, still quite cheap. Um, probably cheaper if you go to places like Tool Station um, and the paint shed, these places tend to be a wee bit cheaper. I'm always a fan of going direct to the manufacturers, um, but, um, these kind of places, like these kind of hardware stores that, uh, or warehouses that stock everything, they're, they're quite good for the pricing because they sell a lot of them so they can, uh, they can afford to keep the prices down. So about between four to six quid, depending where you go for one of these, and the replacement sleeves will probably set you back about two to three quid, not dear. Um, depending where you go. If you're paying any more than that, you're getting ripped off. If you live in a small area and you're, you're limited um, in the local hardware shops, like kind of hold on a monopoly, you're, um, I would suggest just drive to a big town, go to a paint manufacturer. Bottom end of the list, this is a Rota cage. I just picked these up the other day, just a few of them, just for spares, because I do use a lot of rollers and brushes. They're always usually wrapped round about in various, um, dipped in various paint colours. So this one will set you back, the cage will set you back about a quid, 150. Your bog standard basic cage and it's functional. I mean, see as long as you clean, keep this bit clean um, and not covered in paint and every time you use, you clean the roller, clean this as well. Um, it will last, it will be fine. What I've got on here, I thought I'd burst that there but I haven't. What the sleeve that I've got on here is an, a Pro Deck Ice Fusion. So this is your bottom of the range. Now this is a, a slightly microfiber. I'm going to be honest, right? See out of this entire kit, I'm going to use this one today. I love these rollers. I love the finish that they give. It's just so smooth. And one of the things that I also love about Pro Deck and these wee roller sleeves is that they, they give you a little bag, saleable bag, right? So see if you are limited with cages and you've used a roller sleeve and you need to change colour, um, what you can do is you just pop the roller inside the wee bag, squeeze it with your fingers 
pull the metal cage off and you're good to go to load up. We just give it a wee rinse obviously because it will have the colour of paint that you were using and you're good to go with a new one. The cage, like I said, about a quid, 150 and the sleeve, um, a pack of two of these Intel station is 260 £2.60 for two of them, so they work at about one third each. So that's your bottom of the, the, the range rollers, and this is the one I'm going to use on this piece, so I'm just going to set that up there. On the brushes, um, this is, <laughs> you wouldn't think it, look at the state of it. Um, there's a bigger one over there, but I'm going to actually use this one on this furniture piece, which is why I've got it out. Uh, this is an Arrowworthy Classic, I think paint all over the handle but I'm sure this is one of the classics it is a uh, contractor pro classic I'm sure it is this brush well I got this in a set so there was three of them and the set was um, in total I think it was 30 quid okay so a brush this is a one and a half inch here okay so a brush like this this size if you're buying this on your own from uh, it would probably cost you about between 8 to 10 quid depending where you go okay or 7 to 10 quid depending where you go that doesn't sound dear but in the world of brushes um, most people tend to go for low end brushes which only cost a couple of quid so the, the, to spend 10 quid on a brush is probably more than what most um, amateur or DIY people would spend however with that being said I would recommend that you invest in a decent brush if you're going to be doing this sort of stuff and even just painting your house um, the, these are sort of, uh, um, this is their own formula for the bristles um, they call it something like it, it looks like the word nylon but it's like nylex or something so I've yet to look into the formula to see exactly what, what it is they're using I find this stuff really interesting you probably find it boring as so I'm just going to not stop talking about the, the bristles, but what I will say to you is because um, co manufacturers like these who produce brushes like these, this is their game. Um, the, you tend to find that when you use a superior brush, the finish is superior. So you get what you pay for in this world. The more you pay, the better usually the, the brush will be. So um, for the bigger size, you're probably looking about between um, 15 and 20 quid. For a, for a decent two and a half to three inch brush like this. You'll see it's got a long handle and it's got an angle. Um, I like using long handled angled brushes. I also like using the next one in the list, which is your medium range brush, which is a, this is crown, I think. It is, this is a crown one. Um, this is also an angled brush, but it has a short handle and that's good for people like girls. It's ergonomically um, sound. It, reduces fatigue in the hand using a short handle because your hand's able to wrap around the the handle easier. Um, it also helps you to hold a paintbrush correctly and I've done a separate video on that um, how-to tutorial so you can check that out as well. I'll leave a link that in the description too. Um, so this brush, like I said, medium range um, it will set you back about, it used to set you back about three quid. You would go to the paint manufacturers, they would have these. In fact, it was, see when they first started producing them, they were only about 150. However, post-COVID post Brexit, they're now up to about between three and five quid, depending where you go. Um, yeah, they're more towards the five pound end, which I'm gutted about because... I would recommend these for DIY people who are starting out. If you are going to be painting your house, your woodwork, um, you want a decent brush, um, you don't want to break the bank um, because there is a good chance that you're not going to, sorry this might sound a bit judgmental, but that you're not going to look after the brush, that you're not going to clean it properly, you're going to just chuck it. Um, but if you want a nice finish still on your, your wood and your walls, you still want a decent brush. Now this has got filamented edges. Um, if you can feel them, they're, they're slightly velvet. What that means is the, the 
when you get to the end of the bristle, it sort of splits and goes out feather-like. Now, what this does is it helps to grab paint and also helps to lay it down nice and smooth. So, see, for a beginner, these are really good brushes. I, I always recommend these to beginners. It's a two and a... Is this a two and a half inch? It's a two inch. That's a two inch. So, this is a two inch brush and... Um, that's usually sufficient for a beginner. I wouldn't recommend trying to use a three if you're not experienced. And a one inch brush is just not going to hold enough paint. It's not going to, they're, they're really only for use in, in wee tiny areas. Um, you really don't want to use a one inch brush if you're, you're to cover any sort of large area because you'll be there forever trying to apply the paint. So that's my next choice. And um, you'll notice that, that I do love my arrow worthy, right? I do, and this paint, this brush I'm going to use on this. This is the, these are the brushes I always use. I switch to arrow worthy, and I've kind of stuck with them. So that's going up there. Um, but <coughs> you'll notice that I'm not recommending the higher price products to you unless you want to take this seriously and do it. The medium range to, to, to low end, well you know, so it was the low end roller that I recommended will do the job um, for an amateur. This one is your low end brush, so you can pick these up in the pound store. These will cost you a bit of quid, okay? The, they're, I think they're polyester bristles or, or to, to, to be honest with you, I don't really know. Um, they have a tainted, a filamented edge there. You can see that. You can see the the colour of the bristle changes towards the top, changes to white. And if you run your hand over it, it feels slightly velvet. That's an indication that it's got filamented edges. So they have attempted to make a good quality brush here, um, as opposed to maybe you're just your standard black, shiny, um, kid-on black china bristles that you get for the pound sh shop. You know the kind I'm talking about. They're just useless. The bristles just fall out of them as soon as you try and apply paint. Um, the only thing that they're good for, I would say, is if you're using a, a paint like uh, Zinser, that the, the chances of rescuing a brush, unless you're experienced, are, are probably now. So I would use a quid brush to, to apply things like that. Um, but you are going to have to spend some time picking the, the bristles back out your piece. So this brush is actually um, a good attempt at a cheap brush. It's a, again, it's a two inch and um, it's angled. So... Again, that's that's a benefit. It's from Harris, and Harris, although they're low end, what I would class as low low quality, um, low budget, uh, low end tools, they do try their best to keep a balance there. So they do attempt quality, as you can see, angled, elemented, nice soft rubber grip handle. Um, light. It's even got a wee, I like these things. Hang. So, um, yeah, I would use it for cheap paint. I keep it for cheap paint, basically. Right, so that's the difference between the tools. Now you know what to use. Um, if you think that I've missed anything out, add it in the comments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, pause the video, um, go set up the paint. Everything's ready, as you can see, tray, tools and the paint I've just mixed and I'm now going to go paint the piece um, I will do a fill tutorial while I'm doing that and what you can then do is go on this journey with me and see firsthand whether this paint lives up to my claims okay so join me again in a minute thank you <laughs> 